Welcome to the Building Envelope Thermal Bridging Guide's instructional video series. The Building Envelope Thermal Bridging Guide has been developed to aid architects, engineers, and building design professionals on how to recognize and mitigate thermal bridging impacts on their projects. In this series of four instructional videos, we will learn about how to use the Thermal Bridging Guide, whether it be for energy modeling, specifying, or finding general approaches for project detailing to reduce thermal bridges. We will look at an introduction on basic concepts for heat flow and thermal bridging calculations, and how to navigate and use the data within the thermal bridging guide. Discussing effective workflow management while using the guide in building design processes from preliminary design to final submission when there are varying amounts of information available. Exploring a case study for determining building U values that includes thermal bridging by working through a calculation for an example archetype building. And finally, special situations for calculating U-values where there are further considerations or adjustments to the methodology, such as floor-to-floor -floor glazing or intersecting details. A significant amount of energy use in North America is cornered by the building sector. And with the expansion of our cities through population growth comes an increased demand for more energy. This has resulted in a demand for higher efficiency in building energy use from government bodies, industry leaders, and concerned citizens who recognize the impact of poorly performing buildings. A substantial amount of energy use occurs through the heating and cooling of our buildings. It is important that we begin to minimize thermal inefficiencies in the building envelope in order to meet energy reduction goals. Often, structural requirements dictate the use of strong conductive components and assemblies, such as metal. These conductive materials can bypass into the insulation layer, creating what are called thermal bridges that can significantly impact the thermal performance of the building envelope assembly. With thermal bridging in mind, you may ask, what are the most effective ways to make improvements to the envelope? As energy codes become more stringent in thermal performance on federal, provincial, and municipal levels, it falls on the building designers to recognize and include thermal bridging impacts in their design to meet specific performance targets. North American standard practice has primarily focused on the performance of wall and roof assemblies. However, what is often missed are the transition details, where thermal bridging can have a profound impact. Transition details such as floor slabs, parapets, and window-to-wall connections, if left unmitigated, may contribute more towards the heat loss than the walls. With that in mind, accounting for these details should be part of the design decisions for the building envelope. With this being a fairly new concept for many building designers, we understand the need for direction regarding thermal bridging in the building industry. With over 500 details and assemblies analyzed for thermal performance, the Building Envelope Thermal Bridging Guide can provide comprehensive guidance and information for mitigating thermal bridging in your particular projects. What are R and U values? Heat flows in and out of the building through the building enclosure assemblies, like walls, roofs, and floors. Insulating components within these assemblies are installed in order to resist that heat flow. The greater the heat resistance of those components, the lower the amount of heat that can transfer out through the envelope. When heat is able to flow around the insulation through structural components or transition details, these create thermal bridges. A U-value is the average amount of heat flow through the whole assembly, including both the insulating components and the thermal bridging components. This can be used to assess the thermal performance of the entire envelope or individual assemblies, wherein lower U values are representative of better thermal performance. Effective R values, which are the inverse of U values, represent the overall resistance to heat flow an assembly has. While R and U values are often used interchangeably, almost all energy codes determine compliance using envelope assembly U values. With that in mind, in order to make those comparisons and get better predictions of envelope performance, we have to know what is in an overall U-value. The clear field. The first thing to include in a U-value calculation are clear field assemblies, which are the main types of envelope constructions on a building. The clear field assemblies typically include sheathings, cladding, insulation, and other components, but also includes frequently repeating thermal bridges that would be too cumbersome to count up individually. So this would include thermal bridging components such as studs, brick ties, supporting cladding, or girts, but not transition details such as slab edges, which are accounted for separately. For each of these assemblies, there is a clear field U value, which is the heat flow per area, that includes the impacts of these uniformly repeating thermal bridges. So if only the clear field assemblies are being looked at, which is current standard practice in North America, 
Are we really getting the full picture of the heat flow through the opaque building envelope? And how could only looking at the Clearfield assemblies skew the decision making on a building design? Transition details. Transition details often intersect or alter the Clearfield assemblies at specific locations, such as slab edges, parapets, and window transitions, which can create additional thermal bridging. Transition details can be separated into two types. Details that can be defined as linear, such as slabs and parapets, or other details that go across the building face, or point details that occur in single infrequent locations such as beam penetrations and pipes. While transition details may not take up a large area of the envelope, the impact that they have on the overall thermal performance of the envelope can be significant. As opposed to the clear field, most linear and point transition details are difficult to give an area-based U-value to. Therefore, they need to have a different way to calculate the heat flow through these details, which is where psi and chi values come in. Performance of a transition detail is determined by taking the full heat flow through an assembly with the detail present, and subtracting out the heat loss through the assembly if there were no detail. This leaves just the heat flow caused by the transition detail. For point details, that heat flow is left as is and called a chi value. For linear details, we turn it into a heat flow per length called a psi value. By separating out the performance of these details from the clear wall, we can simplify our calculations greatly. Calculating overall U values. With these three types of thermal transmittances, clear field, linear, and point, we can now calculate the overall assembly U value that includes all the impacts of thermal bridging. Since the performance of these details have been calculated separately, the clear field U value, the psi value, and the chi value, the heat loss they create can be simply added together. Therefore, the overall assembly U value can be calculated using this equation. In essence, the equation boils down to this. The total heat flow through the assembly is equal to the heat flow through the linear and point transmittances divided by the total area of your assembly plus the heat flow through the clear field portions of that assembly. Navigating the Thermal Bridging Guide Calculating clear field U values can be done by many methods, depending on their complexity of the clear field assemblies. This can be done by hand calculations for simple assemblies, like some wood frame, or hot box testing, or 2D and 3D modeling. For the calculation of psi or chi values, this can also be done in many ways, but most often by 2D and 3D thermal modeling. If we do not have the ability to do testing or 2D or 3D modeling, where can we get the information to put in the overall U-value calculation? This is where the Building Envelope Thermal Bridging Guide comes in. This guide contains thermal performance information for over 500 details, clear field assemblies, and scenarios that can be used to help determine building envelope thermal performance. Let's take a closer look. The Building Envelope Thermal Bridging Guide is divided into several parts. Part 1 is the backbone of the guide. It contains the calculation methodology and the catalog of details as summarized in this video. Part 2 shows the building energy usage that is unaccounted for when interface details are not considered. This is done through the use of whole building energy modeling for several archetype buildings. This also provides some example cost benefit and payback periods for improving the building envelope by mitigating thermal bridging. Part 3 highlights several important takeaways from this analysis in separate unique discussion sections. This includes the awareness on the differences in thermal bridging from different construction types, the impacts of architectural features, opaque glazing spandrels, and the importance of detailing window transitions. For this video, we will focus on the features of Part 1 of the guide, as well as the component database in Appendix A and B. We encourage you to also read the other sections of the guide for additional insight into the impacts of thermal bridging and its mitigation. The main body of part one of the Building Envelope Thermal Bridging Guide brings you step by step through the calculation process. This summarizes the various calculation pieces, as well as the calculation methodology, which we also explained earlier in this video. Further, the guide explains how to correctly perform takeoffs for area and lengths of the building components based on architectural drawings. This also includes some nuances for tricky components in several asides. This will be highlighted more thoroughly in video 4 of this series. The main body of part 1 also introduces and explains how to use the detail catalog found in Appendix A and B. The database in Appendix A and B is separated by component type, such as window wall, steel stud construction, and concrete construction. 
The database contains all the information needed to include specific details and calculations. A component can be taken directly out of the database to be used in detailing, or the performance of a project detail can be estimated based on similar ones found in the database. Appendix A covers the material data sheets for each detail. This includes the list of components, detail images, dimensions, and material properties. You should start here first to get a good idea of what the detail will look like. Appendix B contains all of the thermal performance information. It also contains a visual summary of all the U values, Psi values, and Chi values for quick reference. More detailed information can be found in each of the detailed results sheets. The use of the catalog will be explained further in the next video. This concludes the first video and overview of the Building Envelope Thermal Bridging Guide. Thank you for watching, and please watch the remaining videos for even more helpful information.